Hey, and welcome back to the Blue Tiger Poker 10K Challenge. We are doing another episode tonight. Uh, we're actually got two tables at 100 NL and 150 NL up. Um, been sitting here just a little bit, played about a rotation or two on the upper left, up just a little bit of money, and then um, about even over here on the other table. And was waiting for a dollar table to open and really couldn't get a seat in one. And um, and the one that did show up, the voluntary pot uh, was very low. So elected just to put in a high um, players see in the pot and um, got that in the mix for tonight. And we might drop it out if um, things are not working out in a good 100 NL table opens up. So, getting into the... I actually just said the word so. We'll just kind of get that out of the way. Um, Saying ain't so contest is up to right about 60 bucks, I think. Um, so, should be interesting if I'm, I'm wrong on that. It is actually probably 50, but I don't know. I think it's 60. And down here, you know, we're not going to get tricky on the 50 cent table. It's pretty straightforward play. Um, these guys are just going to call off with such weak hands that you, you don't want to be bluffing. As much as you can, put the pressure on somebody on the 100 NL tables. And so to all your mothers out there, today is Mother's Day, so hope you had a very good day uh, that's what i've been doing mostly is we've been celebrating mother's day had a big cookout and stuff for my mom and my wife and the two girls took care of her um so yeah happy mother's day if you got any mothers out there watching uh, but back to poker now um really nothing to talk about in these hands uh, i don't even think we can pull up the hand where we got over here Basically, we had uh, King Queen. I'll just have to tell you, it's uh, been so long ago. The new software doesn't allow you to go back as far. You have to wait the day before you can go back and look at the hand. But had King Queen offsuit open from the cutoff position, big blind called, and um, here we are going to raise it up just a little. Uh, this guy is short stack, so hopefully, maybe get him to fold out. If he does call, we can probably bet a lot of flops and pick it up. But on the king queen hand, uh, the flop came king queen, I think nine, and there were two hearts on the board. So I bet once he called, and then another heart hit the turn. So you know I kind of was controlling the pot size in. I don't really want to go away. And if he had to open on draw, the board's just really scared. You're just kind of getting the showdown at that point with our hand. So um, I checked to him. He bet like a quarter pot which was a little scary because, you know, he's, he's just trying to get us the call, but then he gave us such great pot odds. I think we had, um, at that time, it was a $15 pot, and uh, he only bet a quarter of it. And then, of course, we end up calling that because if we do hit a king or a queen, we actually beat him with his uh, flush or straight. So we called, and then um, the, the final card was just something that didn't really matter. And then... Um, we went check check and our king queen hand was good i think he had an ace something like an ace four or something like that so uh that's how we got the money over here and then you guys are up to speed on the, any other hand we've played since then um we're gonna watch these guys on this dollar table up here if they continue to be limping like that we're gonna start punishing the limpers uh and raising with about 82 cards at that time and here on this um, very loose 50 cent table, I will go ahead and open with this. Um, we won't call 13 off his shoves, but they've been getting a lot of callers, and I like these hands playing them, even though we're going to be sort of in early position if we had call, call, but actually we got a better scenario with when just one guy left to act after us in the hand. Um, player one is taking his sweet time here so i guess he'll be making his re-raise or fold here and tying him out sitting it looks like we're gonna get the sitting um but has been very loose so i mean i am impressed that we don't have at least a four-way pot here um 
because basically I'm looking when this hand does hit that we get paid off a big percentage of the time and it makes some money. So um, we're definitely just going to get out of the way here. I mean, this guy, our hand, we probably have two live cards on him, but that's about it. I'm sure he's got overs with that. So, and again, you know, we can start opening our bet sizing a little bit smaller too. Um, just, you know, so we're not burning as much when this short stacker does shove on us or somebody else. So, so I am impressed. Like I said, we, we just sat down and all this, you know, it was at the early parts of the table. I think like 75% was actually, we, we probably should have just betted there. Um, there's not many hands that beat us at this point. I don't, I mean, I don't think he has a Nate. He might have overs and we'll probably just race it off if that's the case. But, um, you know, we can actually look to put the check right in. We made a mistake, but, you know, the next best play after that is on that type of board. You know, I think if he had a bigger pocket payer, then those eights on the board then he's he would have raised those and if you know he was getting gutsy with an ace 10 ace jack type of hand and wanted to shove it or king queen or something like that then you know we're, it's it's basically a flip at that point and we're, we might be a slight favorite here on the flop but with his two overs um the unfortunate part at the board double pairs he also wins that way if uh like a five came off and another five on the river <clears throat> um so you know when we made a mistake you know the next best thing is you either fold or raise there you don't just call um you know if you think there's just too many cards that's coming out to beat us and there's just not much we can do in the form of heat taking if we check to him again he bets we got a fold and we just burnt some money there so i like the play of betting on the flop and if he calls that's great and you know if he shoves then we'll probably still call it off seeing stack size but um you know the check raise worked out for us when we got him to bet and we got to raise him so pretty standard pocket nines on the button we're gonna raise we've been getting this guy to call a lot you got the table so we might see him too um, this is not a bad flop up here. You know, our hand doesn't look good. We got a back door. And so we're actually going to continuation bet on this board. Um, and if he calls, then that's great. But we're going to win that biggest point in time. And of course, we flop the nut down here. So we're just going to bet small. He's either calling or he's not. And most time he's not. Uh, I mean, checking there, maybe seeing if he can catch up. You can do that, but I always like betting my pair because even if he had like ace queen or something like he doesn't have that hand but if he had queen jack he might just uh try to get crazy with his hand right then and try to make a play on us so this guy's pretty tight so i think we can just go ahead and win this down plus we also when we're going to play him we don't want a multi-way if we can help it we want our hand to be just heads up with somebody so we're gonna make a bigger raise and um <clears throat> If player two shoves, honestly, I'll probably end up just dumping the hand. Um, you know, his his range is much tighter. So, you know, at best, you know, we're hoping to get it in against jacks or queens, but uh, or an ace queen type of hand. But any other time, he's um, any other time, he is pretty much just. Uh, and he's giving player five a hard time like you know what, what kind of hand are you calling with that you're not going to shove with there on the on that next play and we're just not getting ready because if he has like queen nine or something like that we still have two overs plus if we hit the 10 we make the straight so we're not going to go away against his small stack size it's just one of those plays where we're going to bet just get it in whereas player two the hand would have played totally different um we would have probably made a different bet sizing there see what he did and then uh or even check to see you know uh 
if we improved on the turn just because the hands he would call us read that that flop would hit pretty pretty solid against him on that so you know it's pretty much you know, when he calls or anything from there it's either he's calling because he's got a draw or he just got his totally dominated so against him we probably went more of a line of check um, behind if he would have played the hand and check to us um because you know the hand that he would be playing is you know and he could even like with pocket nines the only thing we we're getting to fold out is maybe a, a pocket pair that's smaller than nines um at that time um and our ace queen type of hand sometimes i do like playing these just flatting from this position and then sometimes i like raising trying to get it in but um don't know much about this guy he's pretty aggressive so if we do hit our hand i think we can probably check to him and get him the bet um and he's going to continue on this king high board too so it's a good time to check to him and let him bet and then maybe check raise right here so there's a half pot bet and um so we are going to do the check raise We're just going to wait a little bit of time. So he either has a king or he's going to raise us, or he's going to give up in the hand right here. <clears throat> so but because he was an aggressive player and he bets, that was the play to make us the most money was to basically check to him, let him bet, and look for a check raise at that time. Because he's going to bet that board just like we would in that position if somebody checked um, the king high board. We're going to bet it. So he's going to be thinking the same long line, lines that we were. And so that's the reason we can make the check raise play there and pick up that pot a big percentage of the time against him. Uh, and again, we're going to open up this pot. But again, we're going to open up smaller because both these guys are tight. And this hand plays very well. So if they do want to raise this, uh, we can look to probably call a three bet here and um, pick up the pot pretty nicely if we hit something large and they're just trying to get aggressive, really aggressive with it. So again, you should probably be opening your blind a smaller because when you do get three bet a lot of times you're going to be folding out that but in that against that player we're, we're going to be taking that call because i feel like he's going to be paying us off more than somebody else if we kind of hit our hand pretty strong and he's you know got a pocket over pocket pair or if like an ace and an eight seven comes out or two diamonds or three diamonds something along those lines um uh, and then we're definitely going to be raising our pocket queens here player six has been calling a lot and then um player three has been also to over raises so now we do have position on player three and again if he goes all in we're just uh at this point kind of sucky but you gotta look at our hand you can play it two different ways the guy's pretty aggressive so we can call and you see if he will continue. Um, and because there's nothing higher than the jack, we're just going to go ahead and if he makes a bet here, a pot or bigger, we're just going to get it in. And if he's got kings and aces, he's got kings and aces. And he actually has sixes. So we pick up a nice pot. I don't know. He probably would have still got his money in there, but... Um, good thing is we don't have to burn a tremendous amount let's say the ace comes or an ace king which you know his hands that he would be raising re-raising with there are those um pretty strong re-raise hand uh, with the sixes i mean that is a play uh, i don't know if um he's a thinking player doesn't seem to be as much as along those lines he's just seemed very aggressive and that's probably the reason he made that play i have pocket sixes what are you going to beat me with type of ordeal there so um same difference down here we we opened and then we got called so we're just going to continue with another c bet and um if he gets 
okay. I mean, if he raises, we'll just get out of the hand because the flush, the draws are there. But again, we just want to kind of pick up on those type of boards. We just want to go ahead, if we can, just get those out of the way because it's going to get a very ugly board for our pocket sevens. And so if we can pick it up there, we want it. If he calls, you know, we could maybe hit a five and have a uh, open into ourself, um, you know, hit a seven. But, you know, seven, we're still going to play a little bit cautiously. And then just because if he's playing the straight draw himself, that could complete his. Um but you know it's again we want to go ahead and try to see to find his hand the best we can at that point so the only way you can really do so is to take a stab at the pot and we have position so if he does call it's not the end of the world for us we can reevaluate like okay a non hard comes or a card that doesn't make the straight uh, we can maybe fire another bullet out where he could be like trying to float with pocket n nines or something like that um, or pocket like eights or twos or threes, he could be like, oh, I don't quite believe you yet. So, and then if it comes to check again, the cards are non hard or doesn't make that straight, then we can fire another one out just to see what happens. And then, you know, if he calls two streets, we can just shut it down and hope her sevens hold up on the end um, at that point. So I actually should have made a smaller bet size after what we talked about. This guy's very tight. If he does three bet us in any form or fashion, you know, if it was suited uh, Jack Queen, then yes, I would um, be happy to call a three bet with that. But um, a non-suited. And, and, and in this position, um, the only two cards that can really come back to bite us, I think at this point in time, is going to be uh, a king or an ace because if the queen comes it's not really hurting us in any form of fashion so we're actually going to check and i guess because we run super good so here you know if he does have like king queen he's probably going to call a bet um and you know we're going to bet half pot you know we are looking at ourselves leaving this open for an open ended draw if he's playing king 10 or something like that or ace ace king i think he would have raised us so he did raise and what we want to do is we're just going to call this time and you know again if he's got king queen we're just going to get it all in there at this point and if he had a set before we just outbeat him on his sets so he might try to take another stab and that's what we're hoping by the just call um and actually on this pot, because if he has a queen, we want him to basically that, or if he has like a pocket sixes, a set, we're going to overbet it just to see if he'll call. Um, problem is either he has nothing or he actually had a strong hand himself in that hand because he plays pretty tight and with the overbet they still like to call that when they play super tight passive it just gets the best to them and like really what do you have here and uh, so i mean we could have actually re-raised him there when we made two pair but like i said if you had ace queen type of hand or something like that then he is going to get a little bit on the um aggressive side where he raised he's pretty much if he had ace queen he's going to bet again he did not so he could have been getting tricky saying oh let's see if you bluff it so that's the reason again we over bet it so if he's like you're full of it then he would shove all in there instead of flat calling like he might have if um in that instance so again we're going to vary our bet sizing because these two you know especially player four you know we just played that hand with him uh, he might think we're kind of loose and crazy. Um, and, you know, now this time he does have a very tight range. So let's say he does have an ace or something like that. So our best case, if we call this bet, if player six calls, then we're definitely calling. If he folds, then we are folding. And the reason is what hands can we really take in the hope to hit? So we're hoping to hit a 
10. Really, an ace I don't think is going to be good for us. So we're giving up this. We're out of position. There's just no reason to try to fight battle with battle. So here we got raised by another type guy. Um, we do have position. So this is opposite. We have position. We do have a little good hand. And we're just going to make a call and see how the hand plays out from here. So he's, he's coming out, firing the same bet sizing he had last time. Again, he's pretty tight. We didn't really flop anything. We're not suited. You know, we're looking at a backdoor draw. So we could raise here. It's either raise or fold. We do not call because uh, there's no reason to call because if we hit our ace, you know, he could be playing ace jack. We're totally drawing dead. If he's playing ace king, we're drawing probably dead. So, um... You know, those are the things that you got to kind of look at when you're playing these type of hands is the the player that you're actually playing against, where if they're total loose, then, you know, we can probably even make one call there because we still probably have two live cards against some of these other guys. And here we're just going to, you know, we're not going to raise. We could raise, try to get this pot down, but these guys are setting so short. I don't want to get um, in there. And then this guy, um, ugh, it's kind of crazy. Now we're going to call this too. Just the same reason we had the first time is we're calling $3 into a $15 pot, you know, and uh, we're going to take that. But now we're giving up. Same thing as if the flop would have came before. There's really no play for us to make. We did bleed a little bit off there, but because this guy called and that one called, I'm probably not calling there. I mean, uh, unless these guys are a little deeper, I know that if I could hit more than one, then, um, you know, are we going to get paid off even bigger? And the answer is no. I don't think we were going to get paid off any bigger than... Uh, in that we did have this guy who set him pretty deep so we got another good reason where if we flop something very hard and very good he's got almost 200 big blinds and um it makes it much nicer to win a pot from him because we're getting so much more implied odds at the end and we're probably gonna to uh, open our ace three hand here um we're gonna do the silly half min raise um <laughs> to these guys and again a crazy player hadn't been here many times but again we're not we're not playing five three for the rest of our stack what we're doing is just trying to weed it out so uh we can get heads up and maybe make a play on somebody and then our ace king type of hand up here we're definitely doing that and you know a really good flop for us we're just going to juice the bucket if he's got pocket pairs he's going to call overs um I don't think that flop scared him. Then we got the flush draw and two overs ourselves. So great little hand to have in that situation. And then uh, we're picking up some decent hands on this table up here. Um, then our buddy down here who loves just playing this right now so we flopped a pair and we actually have a diamond too so it's six so we're just checking to him seeing what he's doing well we're not going to get crazy um if he bets like half pot we call if he bets close to pot we call again we're getting a showdown there's no reason for us to get really frisky with him here um seeing if he takes a stab with anything we're just going to check uh again his, and the good thing is we're going to show him our hand and, you know, him keep three badness, which, you know, pocket 10 is a great hand to three bet with in his position. It's just, you know, the good thing is he can see that we're not calling him so we can make some plays. What I'm saying is that's going to help us later where if the board gets a little sticky and it's in a hand range that um, we can pound him with, then we can make a play that's totally a bluff but it's believable because he knows what we're calling him off with. So 
So here we are going to make the first call. Um, we only got one over on the board. The heart comes, so that allows us to play the heart draw also. So, I mean, if he continues, that means he's got a queen. Um, uh, trying to think is uh thing with the heart. We're actually going to check one more. Uh, see, I get plays out of both way, and I'll explain them both here in just a second. So it's a good card on the river. Um, unless he shoves 47 here, we are, and again, there's no reason to bet. He's not calling a bet um, there at that time. And by betting, if with his ace-queen, that's what I was about to say, is you're going to get value out of maybe an ace-king type of hand who just don't want to give up on that. And, you know, any other thing, maybe a pocket pair that's, under us uh, the pocket tens pocket jacks definitely would call there and and so i'll add more to just checking our hand down even though there was some overs that could come but we can easily get away from it as small as the pot was it's we you know we didn't have a ton of money invested at that point all right well i think that's it for this episode of the 10k challenge so until next time guys good luck at the tables